I'm about to meet the chief of a remote village in Senegal. I'm nervous. Will he accept my presence in his village? This village is not used to being visited by tourists, living peacefully on the outskirts of a large fishing town. It's possible that my arrival and my camera may be unwelcome. I'm about to find out. But before we receive the chief's verdict, we should probably go back to the start of this tale. It all starts several hours away in Senegal's capital of Dakar. I start the day with breakfast at my hotel in downtown Dakar. Yes. Look at this. It's unexpected. After that surprise at breakfast, we meet up with Nika and Abdullah, our local guide and driver for the duration of our stay in Senegal. Today, we are leaving Senegal's bustling capital and venturing into the country's arid interior in order to meet villagers belonging to one of the largest ethnic groups in Senegal, the Fulani people. I'm visiting Senegal with the goal of meeting people from different backgrounds and learning about their cultures. I want to share their stories with you. It will take us a couple of hours to reach the village. The Fulani people are pastoralists, their lives revolving around their livestock. As they need to be close to their livestock, they are always found far away from the cities. Our journey starts by navigating through the busy streets of Dakar. It's mid-morning and the city is a hive of activity, showing a bustling side of itself that I didn't get to witness during my explorations around the city the previous day, which was a Sunday. Dakar is chaotic, mesmerizing, and I'm sure very different to our upcoming experience in rural Senegal. But then, we are pulled over by the police. They proceed to search our vehicle. It's a nerve-wracking few minutes, but eventually they let us go. Finally, you didn't get anything. Oh, okay. Okay. So are they basically trying to find a problem so that then you have to pay them sort yes, of yeah, yes. to, to, yeah. Does that happen often? We reach the main highway, which leads away from the city centre, passing heavy queues of traffic as people arrive in Dakar, presumably about to start their working day. The roads clear up as we leave downtown Dakar, passing through the suburbs. The buildings here are notably different from the gleaming tower blocks in the city centre. At first glance, you may think that they're very old, but that's not the case. In fact, pretty much all of these buildings are under construction. These buildings are built in stages by their owners, gradually over an extended period of time. They are perfectly habitable in the meantime, and many families do live in them. But the option is there for another floor to be added to the dwelling in future. Only once all the desired floors have been added, will the building be rendered. The world outside my car window begins to shift. Tall buildings replaced with rows of palm trees and iconic baobab trees in a range of interesting shapes. The more inland we get, the hotter and drier the environment becomes. The Fulani village we are visiting is on the outskirts of Bor, a sprawling fishing town on Senegal's Petite Coat. We turn off the main highway and drive through the outskirts of the town. Shortly after our arrival in Bor, we stop off at a convenience store in order to purchase gifts for the village we are visiting as a thank you for allowing us into their village. So is this the shop we go to? Yeah, that's the place, Sokna. That's the woman name. Bonjour. I was grateful to have Mika with me, as his knowledge of the area and culture was essential when deciding what gifts would be best received by the Fulani village. We purchased sweets for the children, as well as some coffee, tea and sugar for the rest of the villagers. Merci. Oh, I forget what happens next. Amour solo. Amour solo. Or noco boco. Thank you. Thank you. Tea is an important part of Senegalese culture. Often communities will come together to drink tea and to socialize. The tea is prepared and presented in an elaborate way known in the local Wolof language as a tire. The slow process of a tire promotes conversation and friendship. Senegalese tea includes a lot of sugar, hence our purchase of several bags of it. So we just bought some supplies from a shop. This shop is pretty close to the village. Just a little bit more of a drive now. Now that we have our gifts, it's time to embark on the final part of the drive, which takes us ever further away from Boar's busy centre. Immediately, I notice differences between the suburbs of this fishing town and Senegal's capital. Cars are far fewer, instead replaced with horse-drawn carts. Livestock roam the sandy streets, completely free range. There are many shops selling a range of items, from groceries to clothing to iron doors, but the atmosphere is more laid back here. It's midday, the time when children return home from school for lunch, and as a result, we see lots of children on their journeys home. We even see a horse and cart with many children sitting atop it, ready to transport them to their village. Soon we leave the tarred roads behind us, the landscape around us becoming ever more rural.
Eventually, we pull over in what appears to be the middle of nowhere. There are some men waiting beside a horse-drawn car. Mika introduces us to them. This is a friend of mine. Oh, hello. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam. Salam. And the rest. Yes. And the rest. Salam. Ella. Good name. Thank you. Okay. Jarajar. Jar. The These are villagers from the Fulani village. We are invited over to the horse-drawn car. Our means of transportation into the heart of the village. On our way, Mika and Suleiman tell me more about the Fulani way of life. The Fulanis earn their living through their cattle and goats, milking them each day and then selling the milk in the local town. By selling the milk, they can then purchase essentials such as fish, rice and oil. Bor is quite a distance away from this village, and so horse-drawn carts such as this are used to transport the milk to the town market. Cars are not so common here. So this is the primary. I'm beginning my oh, study. Oh, you studied that? Yeah. And after I yeah. do the, and after I go to the university. Oh, the wow. University. We study with computer. Computers. Online. Oh, that's the good. is online. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> What kind of job do you want? A translator, maybe. Yeah. Easy to get a job here in Senegal. Yeah. In the station selling for the gasoline or you know, easy to get a job here. And you see opportunities. And yeah, so you just apply for yeah. what's going. Yeah. The, most, the majority are Muslim people. Yes. The village. There are some Christians, no many Christians. Okay. So, We arrive in the heart of the Fulani village. Jarajaf. <sighs> Originally, Fulanis lived a nomadic lifestyle, the majority of the community moving away from their villages with their cattle in the dry season to find better grazing, which would usually take them to the border with Mali. However, things are changing, and today, only a third of Fulanis are nomads. So you do place where we put the cow. Cows come back in the evenings, the way they stay. In, in a circle? Yeah, in the circle. The nomads are going to the bush and they come the afternoon. When they need water, they go here, and when they need grass, they go there. Many villagers here have left the nomadic ways behind. There are several reasons for this, including access to better education. Schools in the village now mean that it isn't practical for families to leave for half the year, as it would disrupt the children's education. Suleiman is part of the first generation in the village to receive an education. He and his friends now have job opportunities that weren't available to their ancestors. And as more generations grow up with an education and different job aspirations, more and more villagers are looking to leave their farming ways behind. However, some older members of the village still live traditionally. This is the original room. Oh, and yeah. He moved, and now he, he wants you know, to find a grass for his animals. The village itself is changing to accommodate the new way of living for the villagers. Traditional huts made from straw and mud are now being replaced with larger buildings made from brick and cement with aluminium roofs. These buildings are more spacious than the traditional ones and keep far cooler, making them more comfortable. Ah, so the ones without the roof, yeah. you know, they've moved. Yeah. Your mother? Yeah, my mother. Oh, yes, we'll go meet her. Salam alaikum. This is Solomon's mother, Na. She said, she said, welcome. Welcome. She invites us into her home. See the house. Wow. Thank you for letting us see. Oh, this is good. Wow. It keeps cool in here, doesn't it? Yeah. Chara You can take a seat. Okay. This is my mother's house. Oh, oh lovely very house. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, thank, photos. Thank you for yeah. letting us into yeah, your home. Thank you. Family, oh, my family. Family. He is little sister of my mom. Live over there. He's the mayor. He's the mayor. The mayor, mayor of the okay. commune of Marikuna. You see the electricity. So they didn't have electricity in back in the day. Yeah. How long has the electricity been oh. here? No. Why? Installation of the power. Installation of the people. Some big part of the region. Okay. Last Saturday? Wow, that is recent. Yeah, our country is trying to change the things. First, they had like the older version where you have a bill every month. You do that, like a new version, yeah. you need to, like a credit. You just yeah. put a credit on it. That's a mother right here. Mm -hmm. And this is the aunt. Where we don't know about my daughter, Franco. My mom said? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Man? Yeah, the job. Uh, you're the job. His father passed away a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. I'm going to go to yeah, what about the Right, I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to go
Yeah. What, what job would yeah. you like to do after yeah. university? Translator. But I'm not very good in English, but I translate. You seem good. good. Yeah. yeah. He can be a good translator because he speaks Fulani. That's his mother language. And also he speaks Wolof pretty good. And French and English. Wow. I think that's enough. That, that is a lot. Some notion in Arab language. Some Arab notion. Well. Yeah. Wow. wow, that's a lot of languages. I can't speak <laughs> any language <laughs> other than English. It's <laughs> bad. So, yeah. the Fulani language, what is hello? Hello, Bada. 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 What what is that? It's a from cotton tree. Cotton tree and mixed like some some water product on it. Nar lives in one of the newer style of buildings in the village, but it wasn't always this way. Solomon takes me to see their old home. Yes, your first home. Our former living and the other. This one too. Yeah, this Both one. of these. Uh, yeah. When did you move? Yeah, last year. They moved last, year. last year you last moved. Year. Year. Oh, wow. It's like a storage for them yeah. where they can keep their stuff. Did you live in here? Yeah, yeah he's, he's living here. He, he's my yes. That is the house of my big brother, my little brother and my big brother here, our former living. The roof fell down, is that weather? Uh, the weather, weather, the yeah. rainy season. The new house is good because it's not going to get damaged in the rainy season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The new one, it has only cement, it doesn't have mud. It's a mud they use. To protect the mud from the rainy season, they have to put the cement at the top. They now that last forever, like the old one, it's totally different. Here you have the, you know, the lock up kitchen. If they're cooking close by the rooms, it can be smoke on the wall, it can be black. So also, it will be so hot. That's yeah. Are they always cooking like uh, opposite side? Marilyn will Marget. Maraketa. She's cooking rice with some smoked fish. So you wash yourselves. We you wash it, wash it yourself. Yeah. So yeah. you put buckets of water mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. yeah. Solomon shows us a large termite mound at the edge of the village. Oh, it's, oh. has this been here a long time? Not all long enough. It's very, very quickly. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Solomon informs me that this small building is used for cooking. It's where they do the cooking. Oh. Cooking, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, wow, I'll try. Oh, it's right. Oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Oh. 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 Oh.
Once all children have received their sweets, it's time to present the rest of our gifts to Nar, Suleiman's mother, who will distribute them fairly to the rest of the village. For the community, they can share that. Thank you. Jada Jeff. Thank you. Salam. Yeah. But our time in the village is not yet over. Au revoir. Au revoir. I'm informed that the chief of the village would like to meet us. I'm not sure whether to feel flattered or nervous. It then dawns on us that we have just given all our gifts away and so have nothing to present to the chief. Bonjour. <laughs> Determined to change this, we stop off at a convenience store within the village. So what are we buying for the chief? We're buying a sugar and sugar, a sugar with some tea. Salam <laughs> alaikum. <laughs> English. English. We are from Manchester. City. Manchester City, yeah. <laughs> 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 they say they know all the football games happening every day. They know all things happening. They know football, all teams, all players. They know everybody. They are every day next to the TV watching football. Who, who do they football. support? Football, all team is Catalan. Yeah. Yeah. Barcelona. Hey, my boy. Catalan. No way. He's a friend of mine also. Everyone is a friend of yours. <laughs> he say, where are you from? From England. Yeah, England. And then he work what she said? He's joking. Yeah. How old are you? Yeah. My age. Yeah. I was born in 1994. How's it going in there? Give that to your new friend. Yes. Yes. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, thank you. It's now time to meet the village chief. I'm nervous. I have no idea what kind of reception we'll receive. My little friend. The last time I saw it was on the last summer. Hello. Same, we hope all your family. He's the actual chief. His father was the chief, but he's getting older now. He's the one who's he's the chief of the village. Yeah, or well, it is lovely to meet you. Oh, thank you. That is so you as you are home, thank you yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Salam. Yes. We are very grateful to them for hosting us. We have felt so welcome and it feels like friends. Jara Jeff. Anyone who comes is always saying Bismillah. That's me welcome. It's now time to give the chief our gifts. He is a very, very happy. He is welcome and we are very happy to have met him. It's like an honor. The chief explains how he will share the tea and sugar with the village. They will all come together and make an occasion of it. The thought makes me very happy. It's now time to say our goodbyes and to leave the Fulani village. My experience today has honestly been incredible and I've met so many amazing people. But my Senegalese journey is far from over. It's now time to head deep into Senegal's mangrove forests, where we will stay on a remote island and meet another of Senegal's ethnic groups. I'll even get to join in on cooking a traditional Senegalese dish. I'll leave that video here for you once it's live. It's not to be missed.